Hello everyone, my name's Katrina and today I have a spoiler-free review for the Strange the Dreamer duology which contains Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. I'm gonna get straight into it and say that this duology is easily one of my favourite series of all time. Both of these books just absolutely blew me away and I thought for this video it was only appropriate to sport some Sarai inspired makeup which also matches the UK editions. I do have a video all about this going up later in the week so you can look forward to that but today I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares. So let's begin at the beginning. In Strange the Dreamer we meet a young man named Laszlo Strange. He is an orphan, he is a librarian, and he is a dreamer. Laszlo is not just fascinated but obsessed with this mythical lost city called Weep. It wasn't always called Weep and he can distinctly remember the moment when that name was lost to the world. An amazing opportunity arises that Laszlo just cannot refuse and the story starts from there. I'm gonna leave it at that in terms of the synopsis, but this series contains so many incredible things. There's mythical creatures, gods, god slayers, warriors, criminals, and so much more. These books just take you on a journey through a beautiful and magical place, and from page one I was just absolutely blown away by the writing style. The descriptions are so whimsical and vivid and colourful and musical and magical. Just to give you a taste of what you can expect, here are a couple of the descriptions that I tabbed when I was reading Screen to the Dreamer. His mind traced the arabesques and coils of an alphabet that looked like music sounded. They were dark, small and lovely. The exact purple of the lining of night, with the shot silk shimmer of starlight on dark water. Ugh. It just interweaves so many flavours and hits so many senses. It was one of the things that I first noticed and first fell in love with when it came to picking up Strange the Dreamer and even continuing on in Muse of Nightmares I was just constantly wowed and in some cases left floored by the beautiful beautiful writing style. It is very lyrical filled with a lot of vivid descriptions and I loved all of it. In terms of what I thought about the story and the plot I don't really want to say too much because I think that you really should jump into this series with as few expectations as you can. But what I will say is that whilst book one was a little bit slower in pace it really stood out to me because of how it introduces us to the world and the characters and makes you fall in love with it all. And then with book two the stakes are raised, tensions run high and you're just sitting on the edge of your seat throughout most of the book as you're waiting to figure out how things will end. It was really interesting as well because there were so many mysteries that were introduced in book one and then the way in which the revelations are handled in book two I thought it was masterfully done. I just think that Lainey Taylor is an extremely talented author and she does a fantastic job of just seducing the reader with the magnificence of Weep and how much creativity there is and then she slowly unveils the whole history of the world layer by layer. I'm just in awe in all honesty and I think that there was so much packed into Muse of Nightmares especially and none of it felt rushed. We meet a wide array of characters in this series all of whom are really really fascinating in their own ways and I wish I could talk about what I loved or found interesting about all of the characters that we meet because I could go on and on but again I don't want to ruin the fun for you of meeting all these characters yourself so I will briefly summarize my feelings. Laszlo Strange he is a reader, he is a dreamer and I really do relate to that a lot and he's also just such a beautiful soul. Sarai is so pure and loyal and full of love. Thion Nero is a stand outside character for me. He's just such a pompous Ass, but I love that about him and to be honest his character arc is probably my favorite of the whole series. I loved seeing the progression that he went through from book one to two. I just I really really appreciated his growth. The antagonists that we come across in all of their different forms were really interesting as well. They aren't villains for the sake of being villains and I kind of found that there were different levels to the antagonists as well. Throughout this whole series there's just such a complex web of lives and everyone is so realized and fleshed out. Even if I don't necessarily agree Agree with some of the things the characters did, I really did come to empathize with them. One thing I will say though is that there is a little bit of insta love in this and normally I really 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 hate insta love but in this case I didn't really think twice about it. Like I do think it did happen quite fast, maybe a little bit too fast, but I think I think there's a couple reasons why I didn't really mind it too much. Both parties were young and inexperienced, like this is the first time either of them were interacting with someone else in a romantic way. And then also the fact that the two characters are like thrust into each other's lives in a really intimate way. I don't know, to me it just made sense that their emotions were heightened because they got to know each other on a much deeper level 
sooner than other characters. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to talk about details. I don't want to spoil anything, but I'll, just, I'll leave it at that, as confusing as that may be. <laughs> Plus, I just loved both of the characters dearly, and I wanted both of them to be really happy. And if that meant being together with someone that they really connected with, then I was all for it. I'm here for the ship. This was such a hard series to review because even though it's spoiler free, I, I didn't want to talk about many details, even if it's included in the synopsis, just because, I don't know, I, I don't want to ruin the mystery for you guys. Because I went into Strange the Dreamer knowing practically nothing. I might have read like a really brief blurb or a couple of sentences about this guy called Laszlo Strange, who was a dreamer, and that was like it. That's all that I knew. And experiencing the whole story and learning everything, discovering all there is to discover without any preconceived notions of what this book would be about was such a great experience. So it's been kind of difficult trying to find a balance between not saying too much, but also really trying to convey exactly how I feel which is hard when you're trying not to say too much. So I hope this review made sense. I feel like it's really hard to encapsulate my feelings about this series. I just can't stop thinking about this story, the characters, the world. I just bow down to Lainey Taylor and her imagination. Like I would love to step inside her mind and see how she comes up with all of the things that she creates in her stories. It's just, it blows me away. I find it absolutely incredible. Overall, both Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares were five star reads. I really loved the setup that we see in Strange the Dreamer, getting to know the characters and the world and just really taking the time to savour it all was beautiful. And I thought that the way that things were resolved in Muse of Nightmares was really clever and exciting. Book two was definitely more action packed and intense. And I think that the two books really do balance each other out with the slowness and the intensity as well. It's just, it's just so beautiful. Can we also just take a moment to appreciate how beautiful these covers are? And then these are like the US ones as well. I can't deal with the pretty. This has also been a really exciting week because not only is today the publication for Muse of Nightmares in the US and the UK, but in two days time, Muse of Nightmares will be releasing in Australia. But I also have a couple of other videos going up later this week for Strange the Dreamer. And then the read along, the live show is going to be the last weekend of October if you guys want to join. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I think that about wraps up this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it, if it made some kind of sense. But um, I would love to hear your thoughts on Strange the Dreamer down in the comment section below. Please don't spoil anything for anyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you very soon in a new video, but until then, I will talk to you in the comments. Bye. <laughs>